everyone, this is Doc C Mom, and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't done so already, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit that little red subscribe button. You can ring the bell for notifications, and if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up. Well, I've got Miss Peanut, Miss Angel, Miss Andy's down here. She may show her face. Anyway, we got lots of news to get to, so I'm bringing you the news in 15 minutes or less, so let's get started. Well, it looks like Joe Biden won't be getting a lot of votes from coal miners with his latest statements. Of course, Hillary promised to put the coal miners out of business in 2016, and thank you, Jesus, that that did not happen. Now, Joe, he is telling coal miners to learn to code. A Fox video showed clips of Biden saying, anyone who can throw coal into a furnace can learn how to program for God's sake. Mm, that's just awful, y'all. Now, Fox had on Chris Hamilton. He's a senior VP from the West Virginia Coal Association. And he said it's just inconceivable how Biden could advocate for putting tens of thousands of Americans out of work. And clearly, Biden has a disdain for coal miners. Chris goes on to say that the coal miners love what they do and recognize the value of their work as they should. Well, Biden, he wants to change all of that. Well, the coal miners, they don't have to worry, y'all, because Trump will be reelected in 2020, and President Trump, he loves our coal miners, and I'll leave a link. Now, on to Joe DeGeneva. Don't you just love him? Well, he went on OAN News, and he just laid it all out, y'all. He first said that people should go to jail for the Carter Page stuff, you know, the lying on the FISA warrants, misleading the FISA courts, and submitting false documents to the FISA courts because all of those are felonies. Now, guys, as I keep saying, there are over 140,000 federally sealed indictments, and when John Durham's report comes out, some of those sealed indictments will begin to become unsealed, and people will start being arrested. The arrest will happen. Now, I don't know when that's going to take place. We have to remain patient. But I promise you, bad people will go to prison. And I personally believe that some will go straight to Gitmo, where military tribunals will be taking place. And people like Comey, Clapper, Brennan, HRC, and Hussein, well, they're going to be found guilty of treason. But first, people like Hunter Biden... Paul Pelosi Jr. and Devin Archer, they've got to go down first. Then we get to the mid-level mid people before the Clintons and Hussein because most Americans still really don't know what's going on and we don't want a civil war and we don't want the deep state setting off biochemicals that could kill thousands of Americans. So there's a plan in place. It's going to take time. Just take comfort in knowing that the arrest will happen and these evil people who wanted to destroy our wonderful country, they are going to be punished. And some of them will be put to death. So, back to jo uh, Joe DeGeneva. He said that the FBI and the Justice Department were completely corrupted under Attorney Generals Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch with the authority and knowledge of Obama. Because Obama knew all about Crossfire Hurricane and the proof is Susan Rice's January 20th email memorializing the January 5th meeting with Obama and all the senior law enforcement and intelligence officials where they reviewed the status of Crossfire Hurricane, a.k.a. Spygate, and Obama stated that everything had been done by the book. Hmm, well... I hate to tell you, Obama, but I.G. Horowitz just proved none of it was by the book. Anyway, Joe goes on to say that Obama was perfectly fine with having massive amounts of Americans' rights violated so he could get to Donald Trump. Hmm. Then Joe was asked how he knew all this was going on way before the public knew, and Joe answered that he knew this was a frame job in July of 2016 when James Comey announced that no reasonable p prosecutor would bring a case against Hillary Clinton. Joe says that was ludicrous. She destroyed 30,000 subpoenaed emails. She got a break because she was Hillary Clinton and James Comey was trying to kiss her fanny 
he wanted something from her when she became president. Anyway, Joe says, any first year you uh, first year assistant U.S. attorney would look at these facts and say, there's a coup underway, there's a conspiracy here. But for anyone who thought that and said that, well, they were labeled conspiracy theorists by the Washington Post and the New York Times. Well, it seems to be a legitimate theory today, doesn't it? Then Joe was asked to what extent the C underscore A was involved in all of this. And Joe says that it was John Brennan that went to James Comey and made him start a counterintelligence investigation against Trump. Brennan's at the heart of this. You got that right, Joe. And let's not forget, it was Brennan that gave the dirty dossier to the press. But Joe, he goes on to say that Brennan enlisted help from Foreign Intelligence Services. We know all this, guys. He's, re he's responsible for Joseph Misford. Joe says people can't begin to understand the role of, that John Brennan played in this. He's a monstrous, monstrously important person. And the damage that he's done to the C underscore A equals the damage that James Comey has done to the FBI. Brennan and Comey are the coup leaders. Can you say boom? And thank you, Mr. Joe DeGeneva. You, sir, are a true patriot, and I'll leave a link. Now, the Washington Examiner, they're showcasing President Trump's achievements over the past three years, which include some of these wonderful items, things like cutting taxes, rolled back regulations, and he fought for reciprocal trade in the promise to put American workers and American jobs first. Seven million new jobs have been created. Wages are rising at a record pace. Unemployment's at a 50-year low. USMCA has been passed, and Space Force has been created. The military's being rebuilt. ISIS is being, ISIS is being wiped out. Illegal crossings have been reduced by 75% since May and 170 conservative judges have been confirmed to our federal, federal courts, including two Supreme Court justices, and I'm sure more in the future. Now, the U.S. Embassy was moved to Jerusalem, and the Dow is up over 10,000 points since President Trump has taken office. So he has delivered record-breaking results for the American people in his first three years in office, all at the same time fighting the deep state, fighting Russia collusion lies, and now fighting fake impeachment accusations. Bottom line, President Trump is awesome. And here's your daily reminder to keep him and his family in your prayers. 17 and the team and they're in your prayers, the military and their families and just everyone who's fighting for our country. Now, Charlie Kirk, he tweeted this out. Breaking, Iranian-backed terrorists have withdrawn from their protest and attacks at the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. No American fatalities, no lies, no cover-ups. This was the complete opposite of Benghazi. Hey, at Hillary Clinton, this is what real leadership looks like. Yes, yes it does, Charlie, and thank you, Jesus, that this crisis has been averted. And it's been ended, and of course, this attack, in my opinion, is the deep state trying to get the U.S. engaged in another war. That's what they want, y'all, because they are in major panic mode, and they're trying everything in their power to keep their crimes from being exposed. Now, in this next tweet that Charlie Kirk, he tweeted this out, and I'm going to read them, and then I'm going to give you uh, my, my little opinion on each item. It starts with, the media told us in 28, 2019 that, number one, Trump would resign. He didn't. Number two, Mueller would find collusion. No collusion. Number three, the stock market would crash. Hmm, the stock market has soared, y'all. Number four, Jesse Smollett was honest. Hmm, we all know Jesse Smollett's a liar and deserves to be in jail. Number five, Trump's base would leave him. Y'all, that's never going to happen. We all know it. And number six, a recession would happen. Well, they just were trying to scare us, weren't they? 
Seven, war would break out. Well, they want war. It sells more newspapers. And number eight, Avenatti was a serious candidate. Hmm, I don't even know what to say to that one, y'all. Just don't believe the media in tweet. That's right, Charlie. They've been lying to us for years. We are the news now. I'm going to leave you with Proverbs. I had to put my Bible up there. I was scared my puppy was going to chew it up like she did my last Bible. Finally got me a new one in, y'all. Anyway, Proverbs chapter 12, verses 17 through 22 <clears throat> say this. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Well, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share my content. It's free. And until next time, this is Doxy Mom, and God bless you all.